with the good comes the bad and that's what we're going over today i'm going to be looking at my biggest draft reaches from the 2022 nfl draft class but what's crack lacking it's your boy bro Schmo, just in case you did not know so go ahead become a bro and subscribe leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content as always let me know what you think in the comment section below let's go ahead get into the nitty-gritty talking cole strange the biggest surprise from the draft and i know a lot of a lot of patriots fans out there not all y'all some y'all man y'all tr trying to convince yourselves this was a good pick and you know what from value sake it wasn't it it just wasn't it, it was a reach so hey i'm not saying he's not a good player he might turn out to be a pro bowler but we're talking about the now and i didn't see a lot of people pegging cole strange as a first rounder i mean you had a lot of nfl gm and coaches coming out laughing at you sean mcveigh himself was like oh shoot i thought he'd be available with our first pick the Rams didn't pick to like what 104 like come on cole strange though is a good prospect he really is i don't want y'all to get too down on yourselves though you're patriots fans so you probably hold yourself in a high regard so you're probably not sad about it at all but coming out of chattanooga mainly played left guard for them he looked solid i thought he kind of lacked a uh in terms of his play strength but you know the dude's plenty strong 31 on the bench uh he actually moves relatively quick uh very nice footwork does a good job getting to the second level can be a bit of a lunger in that regard and he gets a little too uh too too upper body heavy and then proceeds to la la lunge but no oh, the cat the cat's good he came to the senior bowl he looked the part. He 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 fit in with the rest of the offensive linemen, which isn't saying much considering how bad the offensive linemen looked at the senior bowl. But coming from lower competition, you want to come in and just look like you belong. And he did that. It was rich at 29. I get it. Y'all traded back. You probably could have did it once more. Is it? Is that the Patriots draft philosophy? Trade back. Trade back. Oh one more thing and trade back but yeah no i had him at 87 on my big board going at 29 i'm sorry guys it's it's a reach and keep in mind this is only my opinion this is this is a opinion so take it with a grain of salt and let's go to the next one the broncos had a stellar draft i didn't like this pick though uh teller yell or turner yell from oklahoma he's a free safety um he's got good speed 447 speed and but i just i didn't see him being highly drafted like he's not going to be a guy in the box almost a 20 percent career missed tackle rate and he he showed limited ball skills in that regard though three interceptions this year was pretty impressive but still not a guy that i had relatively high on my board matter of fact i think my my highest deep safety on day three i i considered be percy butler but yeah no for a team that i actually liked a lot of their picks uh especially considering their first pick came at 64 uh and i can't i don't think they traded out of that pick i think they decided to go with nick benito i can't recall now that the draft is uh days removed but this was one pick i just couldn't i couldn't get behind i thought he was more of a late day three guy on to the next being tyron davis price i love this cat he was like running back 17 16 or 17 for me but niners fans if you want to tell yourself hey it's a banger pick hey he might end up being real good he's coming to a very good system but that was a very steep price you paid you didn't really draft for value in that regard for a team that did that you hit it the year before with elijah mitchell you did you really did and guess what he was a six rounder i guess you could be like oh well he's a body type at running back we didn't really have and that we wanted it's like cool that's cool and all but golly dude that, that was very high for him and 
It's not like last year. Like, he had some stellar games. Like, the Florida game was real nice where it went for over 208, uh, went for 287 yards. Uh, that was by far his best game last season. But he was still middle of the pack in terms of force missed tackles and uh, having over 200 carries. His yards after contact, 2.8. Eh, you want to at least be above that three if you're going to draft this guy on day two, which is what you did. Like, I get it. He's a bigger back. He He's a banger, but like, he's a hammer, but he typically goes down after contact because uh, he goes down fairly quickly after contact. Yeah, it's, it's just kind of the thing. His plays for 15 plus yards were 11 uh, last year. He's really a short yardage back. It's kind of what I imagine his role is in the NFL, though. He could be a lot more because uh, the dude did test out phenomenally 448 and his size being, uh, what was it, 211, six foot. Plays a lot bigger and looks a lot more uh, like lower center of gravity. But still, it, it, to me, it was a reach. All right, let's talk about Michael Clemens, the Jets pick in the fourth round because I had him as a late day three guy. They took him at the beginning of the fourth round. And this is a team I loved what they did, especially after going out and getting Jermaine Johnson. But, like, I don't think this was it. This this wasn't it. I don't even think he was the most impressive guy on that Texas A&M defensive line. Obviously, you got a guy like uh, DeMarvin Leal. But, like, it's not like Clemens had great get-off. Like, that's what actually turned me on to Tyree Johnson because I was like, who's this guy exploding off the edge? And Clemens ended up being one of those, like, uh, late to the party, life of the party. If you remember, it wasn't, like, going, like, in the Auburn game, this is the photo I'm using. He, he takes a fumble to the house. He was late to the party, but he ended up picking the ball, taking it to the house. Like, okay, that's all nice and well and whatnot and i get it. he's got an impressive length but he just isn't explosive he isn't quick off the line he is relentless you do like that about it and he, he actually he actually gave evan neal a hell of a game but i just thought there were so many better edge prospects in this class um kinsley and agbari included as he was a guy that was uh, on the board when they were picking there so like yeah i didn't love it considering where he went that's kind of the point of this list and then the texans they take uh tegan quitterano i'm really bad with names but he he's a blocking tight end through and through he's a blocking tight end that's just who he is what he is and it just it didn't wasn't a valuable pick to me as you could see he was very low on my big board because he's a guy that again just a blocking tight end uh he does well in the red zone though got a really big frame 6'5 258 uh want to go see how he tested out like he tested out uh actually pretty darn no he didn't my bad uh 49340 I mean, I get it. You're taking him in, like, what, the fifth? But I thought you could probably got him a little later. Uh, I want to say that James Mitchell was still on the board, who was a guy that I just loved. He's like the apple of my eye. But neither here or there. It's just, for me, it was just wasn't a great value, value pick. For a team that actually had a lot of good picks and then some that seemed a bit reachy, but you could kind of understand it. Like Kenny and Green, you can make a case. They try. I heard they tried to trade down another time, but uh, it just didn't come to fruition. But they really liked Kenny and Green. Kenny Green's a phenomenal player, and that's why he's not on the list. Jack Jones. We're going back to the Patriots. Jack Jones. Riddle me this. They just picked up Marcus Jones, a guy that's going to have to play in the slot. And I really think Jack Jones is in the same boat. If he's going to stay at 171, he's going to have to play in the slot. I mean, yeah, he's a phenomenal special teamer. Why are you picking him up in the fourth round? Like, oh, he's already an older guy, transferred from USC in 2018. I believe he was 2016 or in the 2016 recruiting class. He's going to be 
24 before the season starts and majority of his snaps came on the outside and to be frank he's just too undersized to stay on the outside though he has been an incredible ball hawk over uh, his career 10 interceptions 21 pass breakups good short area quicks which hey that's it's pretty good if you're gonna put him in the slot but also you kind of got jonathan jones there right and you it just for me it didn't make sense and it was a reach in general so it's like first off the pick for me didn't make sense and then second off it, it again it was just a, a big reach i think on the part of the patriots but yeah he's gonna be a hell of a special teamer and uh their boy uh matthew slater ain't getting any younger on to the niners here again with samuel womack which sucks because he was kind of one of my sleepers in this draft class they just took him way too early i had him at 364 on my board and he ends up going at 172 and i was utterly utterly shocked played in a zone heavy defense and i mean at 5'9 189 he came in a bit undersized but he's got good length he looked uh exceptionally good in the explosive drills good movement skills as well but he he's a cat that just in off coverage still got too handsy just too physical for his own good he was flagged so often uh he wasn't much of a participant in the run game despite him being very explosive downhill uh and a lot of the plays he made was well, it was him coming downhill undercutting uh weak arm quarterbacks that just didn't have the zip to get passes where they should be but um yeah no like overall i really did like the prospect over his career a less than 50 percent completion rate five interceptions 30 pass breakups like that's really really solid but uh just a little early for my taste on to darren williams baltimore this by far i think uh, i think the chiefs baltimore and the baltimore ravens had the best drafts of anybody in this class however not every pick was a banner i think demario williams it just wasn't it a guy that's i think gonna probably have to play in the slot and mainly played on the outside uh got really he has really good ball skills he had eight pass breakups and an interception this past year let me see if i can find his test and scores i don't think i have them offhand no yeah here they are uh tested particularly well but again he's in the slot he's got sub 30 inch arms i know some people hate pointing that out but listen it's, i'm just saying it's not it's not a standard a league for a guy to start on the outside with sub 30 inch arms you, you kind of you don't want to be betting on these exceptions for the most part but uh, you feel a little bit better about that on day three but we're talking like we're still like early day three this point for a guy that's 415 on my big board and just got outshined by his teammate marcus jones no real special team experience for demarion williams like no return experience like uh, just thought th they took a cat earlier than i think anyone probably had him but again i'm only speaking from my board also an older guy is going to be 24 when the season starts all right chicago bears village jones uh we talked about them not helping uh <laughs> not helping justin fields at least i talked about that their first two picks despite how much i like the prospects those picks don't do that they don't help our boy justin fields and i don't think this pick does either yeah he's gonna be a a a vertical threat but he he was 25 he's gonna be 25 at the beginning of the year and he, i think he's for the most part he's really just gonna be a return man i really do there you go back to senior bowl this is a guy that can't get off on press to be fair the guy that he that was playing him uh tyreek wolin is kind of a physical marvel in his own right but i really think he might struggle to get off on press he was a grad transfer from usc look at that a lot of people transfer 
uh, transferring from USC. And now everyone wants to go there because they're paying the big bucks. Hell. Uh, but he's really good with his hands. He's good at shifting gears. But at the same time, man, like, again, this this cat's, I think, just going to be a returner. He had two. She has two career uh, kick returns for TDs. And, punt, uh, and he had five punt returns this past season that went for 25 plus yards. And that's great. He's going to be amazing in the special in the return game. It's just, I don't know. This isn't, this wasn't the pick I was thinking. Okay. There, this is to help Justin Fields. I just, with better receivers on the board, in my opinion, uh, it just wasn't it. It was a reach. I had him at 204, which I think was probably lower than the consensus anyway but still i think 71 was going to be rich for a lot of people like i mean there were just other guys in this class danny gray uh jalen tolbert uh specifically actually where did i know he went to the cowboys but what pick was that tolbert went to the cowboys with pick can we be specific here I guess we can't see now that I say this out loud, you know, like I brought it up. I'm kind of curious, like, like what was the specific pick bears pick? Uh, let's see. 88th. Yeah. Still on the board. I thought way higher upside, younger prospect as well. So yeah, just wasn't in love with it. And then the final guy on my list is Snoop Connor out of Ole Miss, picked up by the Jags. I think the Jags had a very sexy draft, um, and this was part of it. They take him, I think it was like uh, in the fifth round, I believe, and I, I had him relatively low on my big board because – just like we were talking about with Davis Price, though, I think Davis Price offers more upside. Like Snoop Connor, man, wasn't a guy that's going to break the big, the big long run. That's just not him. He only 22 uh, runs that went for 10 plus yards. Only eight of them went for plus 15. Uh, his force missed tackles, 24 on 130 carries, which is actually, it's fine. But it, his his yards after contacts just even worse compared to davis price who's it's not terrible but like 2.48 just atrocious just atrocious and it's like you already kind of have like the the thunder in the backfield in the form of james robinson i don't know what this pick accomplishes it's not a diff, really a different type of uh, running back that you already have in your backfield. And arguably, there were better running backs on the board. So, like, I don't know what's up with that. Have them at 339. Like, I don't know. I thought it was just kind of wild. But uh, that's it for the video. If you're looking for the brighter side of this, who are some of my steals, guys that really got me excited, then go ahead and check out that video. I put it out earlier today. But until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.